Welcome to yet another video. This one is gonna be pretty short. I'm just going to show you a few tips and tricks that I use to make my 3D models smaller and make them more manageable to work with given the machine that I have. Speaking of which, I am using a laptop to both record this video and also just for my everyday 3D modeling. And the laptop doesn't have uh, like really strong hardware. It's 16 gigabytes of RAM and the GTX 1650 graphics card, which is not not great. Um, so th there are quite a few places where I need to kind of cut corners and figure out how to optimize my scenes. So the first thing that, and I'm going to go through this real quick. So the first one is that I always like to use is a command that's called purge, right? And basically what it does is if I type in purge and hit enter, here it's going to ask you uh, in the command line, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions. You know, what, what kind of uh, stuff would you like to purge, actually purge, right? Uh, blog definitions, annotation styles, blah, blah, blah. The most important two for me, or, or three rather, for me are the materials or the textures. <clears throat> the materials or, or the textures. Uh, the block definitions and also the layers. So I guess it's not three, it's four, <laughs> right? So just make sure that those uh, four are set to be turned to yes, hit enter. And what it's going to do, it's basically going to remove or delete everything that is not being used. And uh, in doing so, it's going to make your 3D model a little bit smaller, right? So purge is a very easy way to go about it. Second one is a little bit more of a mindset based, I guess, uh, approach. And it's NURBS versus meshes, right? So I constantly say this in my videos, meshes are much more lightweight than NURBS uh, geometries. So if you have some sort of a thing, some sort of an object that's super heavy, right now my scene is 106 megabytes, right? And I assume that most of it is being eaten up by this super complex NURBS geometry. You can always try and convert it into a mesh, right? But just keep in mind that if you convert a NURBS geometry into a mesh, and I'm going to do it now, I'll just select it and type in mesh, hit enter. And let's just go for simple controls right now and somewhere in the middle, hit preview. As you're converting it into a mesh, keep in mind that you will be gaining performance, but you're, you'll be losing flexibility in terms of what you can actually do with that geometry. Uh, so what, how I would use this is I would only optimize or only convert to mesh uh, those types of geometries that I'm not uh, planning on modifying anymore, right? So once stuff is done and I want to build up a scene for rendering, then most of the time I will be converting stuff to meshes just to make sure that my 16 gigabytes of RAM can handle my scenes better, right? So I'll just hit OK, let it convert. And uh, once it's done, I will delete the NURBS version of it. So this is now the mesh version. And I will be, I will just save it, I guess, to just see how much I gain or how much of a weight <laughs> in megabytes do I lose from uh, by doing so. So before it was 106 megabytes, and after I've converted this into a mesh, it became 71 megabytes, right? So there's quite a big chunk of this kind of file size has been just deleted, right, by converting stuff into a mesh. But I could kind of keep going and converting, you know, windows and then frames and so on into meshes, but you get the idea, right? You lose flexibility, but you, or not flexibility, but um, what's the word? 
you lose a way of how you can work with uh, this geometry as if it was nerves but you gain performance right so you do this at the last steps of your design so first two were really simple and really straightforward the third one is going to be a little bit more complicated to get into but i'm going to of course show it and it, it is going to be the most powerful one in my opinion so before we dive into it i i need to kind of explain the logic behind it and i guess i should just say the tool that i'm talking about is blocks and the concept of using blocks as as your um for your geometry for your geometric needs if you have an object that is being repeated a lot right let's just do a box just move it up like so move it up like so pull in difference like that right if you have this box right and you were to copy it copy it you know making a bunch of copies of this box over and over and over again the file size would of course would keep increasing right makes sense because you have like instances of the same geometry being copied right and it's basically um the way rhino will understand it is you know it's not the same geometry it's just a bunch of different geometries that look the same let's say it like that right so it's go your file is going to be heavier and heavier and heavier and this always happens with doors windows and so on you have a lot of repeating stuff in architecture right but what you can do to fight this is you can have a block approach right so if you have one instance that you know is going to be copied a lot you can block it so you can select the object and type in block hit enter <clears throat> specify its base point i like to use uh, the bottom left corner of, of the box or the zero 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 coordinates of the world whichever you want base point and then for for its name you just write you know uh, i'll i'll just write box zero one i don't know and description you can just write something in the description and just hit okay right you have now a block and you can access if you have more than one block you can access all of your blocks and all of the information of your blocks within the bl block manager if you type in block manager you'll see it here's my box and the preview of it is not that great i think that's because of my um screen um it, it's a 4k screen but it's 15 inch and that's it doesn't work <laughs> that that well but basically here you can change up quite quite a few things uh with it um and also if you want to delete blocks from your file you do it through here by by hitting delete right so now if i take this box and i make copies of it doesn't matter how many copies i make the file will not become heavier it's not going to increase in size well technically it's going to increase in size by a bit but not by a lot right so even if I had like a hundred thousand of these boxes, the file size right now it's 71 megabytes, it would be like 72 megabytes, right? Graphics card on the other hand would struggle, but that's another, another issue. So that's the logic with the blocks. By the way, if you want to uh get rid of the block information all you need to do is just select your geometry and type in explode right you hit explode and then it's going to kind of remove that block envelope from your geometry and it's going to stay as a um as a single piece or, or not as a single piece but as a starting piece the poly surface that we have here uh, what can you do with a block? Well, you can rotate the block and you can scale the block and you can move 
and copy the block. That's it. Not, not much else, right? So blocks do have only three transforms for them available. And I, to my knowledge, you can't really deform a block, but I might be wrong about that. I, I do think you can't deform a block, so you can only kind of scale it, right? And by deform, I don't mean... Okay, let me... I do need to explain this a little bit more. By deform, I do not mean... Um, scaling it in one direction. You, you can't... Like, without any problems, you can do that with a block. That's, that's fine. Right? You can do this, you can you can rotate it and then and then scale it like so. That's also fine. You know, you can do a bunch of different things, but you can't bend it, you can't twist it, right? That's that's not gonna work. Um right. And these three, by the way, are still Rhino will understand them still as the same geometry that just has three different transforms attached to it right so now going back to or not going back moving forward i guess i will open up my uh, mesh stress test that i have prepared and i'll show you um show you my test bench right uh, where i actually tested out how well do these blocks work and how how much do they influence performance so i'm just waiting for this bad boy to open up it's 370 megabytes so it's not that heavy usually like the the, the file size that i usually have when working with individual houses is around a gigabyte Right, so 363 megabytes, it's still pretty decent, but, you know, not, not, not the lightest, let's say, 3D model. So this is the, the model, right? It's a mesh, and or rather multiple meshes. So it's not even an herbs geometry. If it was an herbs geometry, I would say it would be, I don't know, 3, 4 gigabytes, something like that. If I were to zoom into it, you will see that there is quite quite a bit of detail inside of this mesh. By the way, I have tutorials on how I made it on my channel. Just look for custom marching cubes uh, series. So we have a bunch of meshes here, right? That are assembled into one structure. And let me just show show it to you with uh, Arctic View, so that it's nicer, right? A lot of complexity, a lot of detail, and 363 megabytes. So this this was something that I was trying to optimize and was trying to make make it work, right? So one thing that that I will be doing with this channel is i will be revisiting those tutorials those custom marching cube tutorials because i figured out how to optimize it and that's going to be with blocks and i'm going to open up this is the mesh stress test right and this is was like the maximum that i managed to get with grasshopper be before it started lagging way too too much and i will open up my block stress test to show you how much I managed to do with um, with Grasshopper by using blocks. Last one was three hundred sixty three megabytes. This one is 17. Yes, you, you heard it correctly. This is this file size, if you don't believe me. There you go. That's that little number right there is 17. 17 megabytes. Oh boy, I'm excited. Right? If if we zoom in, we still see all of the good stuff. 
right? Well, except my graphics card is it it doesn't it's not loving it, especially considering the fact that i'm I'm recording this <laughs> right uh, the the card is just just being destroyed right now, but besides that, I would say that this is around in in terms of polygons, this is around fifty million polygons, right so pretty damn good honestly the reason why this is only 17 megabytes is because this whole structure that you see here right that you're seeing right here is assembled assembled out of 14 different elements that just are rotated in different ways right only 14 so if i type in block manager and i take a look okay this one was the test one delete that This was my, my bad. Oh, never. Ugh. I made a boo boo. <laughs> Shouldn't have deleted that. That wasn't a test one. Wait, I'm undoing the block manager and I'm doing it again. Thankfully, you can undo the deletion in the block manager without any problems. So I have 14 elements in total. And all of those are just being repeated, right? So all I, the whole information that I need to save inside of my Rhino file is the library of those 14 meshes. And then those 14 meshes can be repeated 5,104 times in total. This is really exciting. And again, I am going to do a separate tutorial for it on how I've achieved this um, and as per usual I will be uploading the definition and all of the files for my Patreon supporters so if you would like to support the channel consider doing so there are benefits wink wink <laughs> um, one last thing before we end here and I know this is maybe you know not not the most in-depth video but there's there's not much to say right it's uh, as easy as it is right the last thing that i want to know and i guess tip number four <clears throat> is how do you make your camera uh, not camera graphics card how do you make your graphics card complain less and especially in the shaded view where you need to show all of the lines of the mesh or of the poly surface well, honestly, on the right hand side where you have your layers and your properties, you can also click on this options uh, wheel thingy here, gearbox, gear, not box, just gear icon here, and choose display, right? Uh, tick mark display, so that you get a display tab. And you can turn off, for instance, mesh wires. If I turn off mesh wires, now my frames per second on my screen like i don't know if you can actually tell wait let me turn on the mesh wires and i'll try to rotate it as smoothly as possible right not great huh not 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 great if i turn them off and i rotate back Okay, fine. It's switching to a wireframe view for a little bit, but it is a smoother experience nonetheless, right? So consider turning off the mesh wires if you don't need them. Or if you're using a, a poly surface, just uh, surface ISO curves as well as surface edges, those two. And I guess that is it. I'm going to find a nice little angle for me to create a, 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 a thumbnail for, with, <laughs> and I'll call it a day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Bye.